Get more on the news at Southampton have withdrawn their offer to Scunthorpe manager Nigel Atkins to take over at St Mary's. Chris Sumter follows Scunthorpe for the town's uh, evening Telegraph newspaper. Uh, he's on the line waiting to speak to us now. Very good uh, afternoon to you. Uh, good news for Scunthorpe this, isn't it? Uh, it is very good news indeed, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Nigel Atkins has been the, the most successful manager that the club have ever had. Uh, he's not even been in charge here four years and they've run promotion twice to the championship um, in that time. They've also stayed at that level for the first time in, in 40 years. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic news for them, really. Anyone that's met him, anyone that come across him, knows his enthusiasm and, and, and joy for, for managing. So the club put out this statement this morning saying that both he and Crosby had agreed terms. Do you think that was it then? Yeah, I, I, I think everyone did. Um, I think even parts of the club clearly by releasing that press release did. But um, within half an hour of, of that news becoming public, um, we'd spoken to the chairman to get his take on things and he'd revealed that um, that might not actually be the case. It seems that Southampton wanted him, what, to resign and he wanted Scunthorpe to get some compensation. Is, is that the way you read it? Yeah, that's the way we read it. I mean, you, you talk about Nigel Adkins uh, enthusiasm, etc. Um, anyone who knows Nigel knows he's a very honourable and, and loyal man as well. And, um, and it's clear, or it seems to be clear, that he'd been asked um, to resign from his position of Scunthorpe um, to take charge of Southampton, which would have meant that the club wouldn't have got any compensation. I don't think Scunthorpe, for, um, for any shot, would, would have been asking for much. Um, he's on a 12-month rolling contract, so they wouldn't have actually been entitled to, to that much money. But Nigel Atkins, being the man of principle that he is, says he, he wouldn't do that, and it appears now that that has cost him the, the chance to go to Southampton. Refreshing to see. Um, as far as league is concerned, they've stepped down to go to Southampton, but do you think he could still be tempted along the way? Um, what do you mean to actually go to Southampton or any other job that, that comes up? Or? Just, let, let's start with Southampton first. Um, yeah, I mean, clearly he, he, he saw that, um, I mean, Southampton have a, have a lot of potential. Um, you know, the, the, there is a chance, I suppose, that he maybe thought that he'd, he'd taken Scunth up as, as far as he could do. Um, but, you know, it, it, clearly things haven't worked out like that. As any manager at a club like this, he's developed this reputation, hasn't he, bringing strikers in particular through Gary Hooper, Billy Sharp, Martin Patterson as well, to name but three. Uh, they've gone for m a lot of money. Are you surprised he hasn't got frustrated before and, and eyed a move away to perhaps a bigger club? Um, maybe not. Maybe not surprised. It, it's, um, I think that the, the thing about Nigel Atkins, he's a very intelligent man. He's a, he's a very thoughtful man. And, and, and any job that, that offer that comes his way, he would think long and hard about, as he has done the, the Southampton one. So perhaps not so much on that front. Yes, he probably feels that um, he has to work within um, certainly tighter constraints than any other championship manager will do and continues to do, to do a fantastic job. But I know, he, I know he remains ambitious and he told us only earlier this week that it probably is a case of when rather than if he, he does leave Scunthorpe, but um, only when the time is right and the job is right. OK, so when rather than if, um, Scunthorpe pulled him a name out of the fire there when Brian Laws left, who would be his natural successor, do you think, at Glanford Park? Um, I think it's pretty much 95% um, certain that they would look to promote from within. Um, the situation this morning looked to be the case, when it looked to be the case that, that, that Nigel Atkins and Andy Crosby um, were going to go to Southampton, that would surely have meant that Ian Barraclough, the first team coach here, who has worked as part of, of Atkins' managerial team for the last three and a half years, would have probably been elevated to that role um, as caretaker manager on a temporary basis and would have been given a chance to have, to have done that job full-time, which I'm pretty sure, barring any spectacular collapse or, or loss of form, that they would have do. The chairman's a big, uh, big believer in continuity, um, and I think, I'm pretty sure that would have been the approach he would have taken. There's some tantalising fixtures on the horizon there, not least in the Carling Cup, isn't there, to come? Uh, there is, yeah, against Manchester United, yeah. Um, it would have been a little bit unfortunate for Nigel, I think, to have, uh, to have gone to Southampton and missed the chance to, uh, to pit his wits against Sir Alex Ferguson, but, of course, now he looks like he's going to get the chance after all. Yeah. OK, Chris, so just to sum up, do you think he'll be there in charge uh, against Bristol City, or, or what's your feeling? Yeah, pretty confident. We understand that he's been taking training as, as normal today um, and I can't see it being, being any different from that. OK, Chris, uh, thanks very much for speaking to us.